In this video, I'm gonna be sharing the low carb egg white bread that I have been making for myself and for my husband who are eating a little bit lower carb these days. This recipe belongs to Maria Imrich, who is a low carb baking wizard. If you try to eat low carb and you have not heard of her, definitely go check her out. All kinds of low carb baking and cooking recipes. Tons of cookbooks available and uh, she gives a lot of stuff away for free on her blog. So I will link this recipe uh, if you want the written version down in the description below. And I will also link the video that she did uh, for this recipe up in the cards. First thing, let's go over the ingredients. The first ingredient is liquid egg whites and this is from a dozen eggs and that comes out to about almost a cup and a half of liquid egg whites. You can use egg whites out of a carton, uh, but it's more likely to for the recipe to fail, for the egg whites to fall. It does work in a lot of cases, but you're gonna be more guaranteed good results if you use egg whites that you have separated yourself. One tip for separating egg whites is that I find if you uh, pull the carton of eggs out of the fridge a little early and you let them come to room temperature, they separate a lot easier. I also have tried a couple different kinds of egg separators and I will link down in the description the one that I use and the one that I liked the best. Next ingredient is egg white powder. All this is is dried powdered egg whites. I use the Judy's brand which I will also link down in the description and Judy's has two different kinds. One is just plain egg white powder. The other one has some sunflower lecithin added and I have used both kinds and have had success with both kinds. Then we're gonna use a little bit of cream of tartar and some salt. And then the last ingredient is allulose and this is a non-calorie sweetener. It's a natural sweetener and you don't actually add this to the bread in order to get sweetness per se. What it does is allows the crust to caramelize so you get this nice dark brown crust and it gives just a little bit of different texture to the bread, but the bread itself does not taste sweet. The last thing you'll need is just some kind of a cooking spray. I like to use the avocado oil spray. I'll also mention right here that if you're not interested in picking up weird ingredients like the allulose, there is a version of this bread that is just liquid egg whites, powdered egg whites, and salt. And so you can leave out the cream of tartar or you can leave out the allulose if you don't wanna deal with that. But like I said, the allulose just gives it a nice dark crust and then the cream of tartar helps stabilize the egg whites so that um, it's less likely to fall and you're more likely to get a good result. I've used this recipe to cook a variety of different shapes of things and the first is just a regular loaf. This is what I'm gonna be making in the video today. I did line the pan with a couple pieces of parchment paper to make it easier to pull out when the time comes but I have also made this recipe in two of these smaller silicone bread pans uh, if you wanna have a smaller slice. And I have also used these silicone baguette pans to make these cute little buns and that worked out really well. I have a couple different pans and so one recipe makes a total of 16. So both of these pans filled up. So this recipe does not use the egg yolks at all, but they are not gonna go to waste. I'll show you at the end of the video what I do with the leftover egg yolks. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the oven to 325. For this recipe, it comes in really handy to have a stand mixer, but you could also use a hand mixer. I'm gonna add the egg whites, just the liquid egg whites to the bowl. I have the whisk attachment on here and I'm just gonna turn it on level two and I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one fourth of a cup of allulose. And I have done this recipe reducing the allulose down to two tablespoons and still got a really good result. Now as the mixture gets foamy and a little thicker, I'm gonna increase the speed of the mixer until I have it on full speed. And I am going to let it whip for probably eight to 10 minutes. You do not want to under whip the egg whites. That's one of the biggest mistakes. They need to be super, super stiff. So it already looks really stiff. It's only been going for like three minutes. But you wanna keep going, it's not done yet.
All right, that's looking about how I want it. The way that I tell that it's done is the eggs, egg white on the side, kind of starts sliding down. It's so um, thick that it's like clumping and it's not as super creamy. It's hard to explain, but you'll get the hang of it after you do it a few times. Now I'm gonna add the last ingredient, which is the egg white powder. You don't wanna add this in when it's still uh, whipping up because it will make the uh, bread rubbery. I am adding one cup and then I am going to mix it just really gently just until the egg white powder is mixed in. You don't want to whip it at this point. I just have it on level two and this kind of makes a little bit of a mess. As it's mixing, I'm just going to scrape the sides to make sure everything gets mixed in equally. One more tip that I wanted to mention is that it's very important to not get any liquid in this recipe, so you want to make sure that all of your utensils and your bowls are very, very dry. You also want to make sure that you don't get any yolk accidentally into the egg whites or else that can cause them not to whip up correctly. And also if you live in a place that's very humid, you might have trouble with this recipe because just the liquid in the air can cause it to have trouble. All right, that is the bread batter and it gets so puffed up that it makes kind of a mess on my mixer because I don't have a giant KitchenAid like some of them. The consistency of this really reminds me of shaving cream. First, I'm gonna spray my pan with some avocado oil. And then the fun part of playing with this batter, you just pour it in and just shape it. It will be super high and heaped up, but it's not gonna rise much anymore. Um, so you're gonna get your loaf shape just from the air that's whipped into the egg whites. And it is important that when you make this dough, batter, whatever you want to call it, you cook it right away. If you mix it up and then let it sit, it'll start deflating and you're not going to get as good of a texture. I don't want any air pockets down on the bottom, so I'm just pressing everything down carefully. Now I'm just going to try to smooth out the top to make it look pretty. All right, that's looking pretty good. My oven is preheated, so I'm throwing this in. I have it just a bit above the middle of the oven, and I'm setting my timer for 30 minutes. It's been cooking for about 15 minutes, and that's what it's looking like. It always looks so pretty while it's baking because it's puffed up to the max. It sinks a little bit when you uh, take it out and when it cools, but it'll still have some good shape. Thirty minute cook time is finished and I am turning the oven off but I'm not taking the bread out yet. You want to leave the bread in the oven and let it kind of start cooling. You want it to cool slowly because if it cools down too fast it can deflate too much and so we're going to leave it in the oven for 30 minutes and then we will take it out to cool completely. It's been resting in the oven for 30 minutes. I'm gonna pull it out and look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. It will sink, like I said, just a little bit, uh, but it always looks the best right when it comes out of the oven. Nice and brown, it's firm. It doesn't feel like it's still wet inside. Sometimes if it's not cooked through it, you can feel it by pressing the top, but this one feels nice and firm. I'm just gonna leave it on the wire rack and let it cool completely. You don't want it to be warm at all when you slice through it. And honestly, that's the hardest part is waiting for it to cool to slice it. So while this bread cools, let me answer a few questions that I expect some of you might have. First off is, does the bread freeze? And I have tried freezing it. I have uh, sliced it first. I took two pieces at a time and separated them with a little bit of wax paper. 
and just froze them in Ziploc bags and that worked great when they defrosted. I pulled them out and put them in the fridge and they defrosted in the fridge, you know, over 24 hours or whatever and they tasted great. Second question you might be wondering about is if the bread tastes eggy and I have had a lot of low carb breads that taste super eggy, especially if you use coconut flour and I just have never been a fan of that and I will say that this bread has very little eggy taste. I can just eat it plain and it tastes delicious and it doesn't even resemble eggs at all. So if you're worried about egginess, definitely give it a try and see what you think. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. I've probably been on and off low carb diets for maybe close to 18 years now. I first went on Atkins forever ago, 18 years ago about, and lost 35 pounds like it was nothing. Uh, all I did was just do the Atkins diet as it, as it was written in the book. And so I have tried a lot of low carb products and a lot of low carb bread recipes and none of them ever stuck. I taste them and think, oh, that tastes okay. But then after I ate it a few times, I was like, no, it's really just not worth my time or effort to make this. I'd rather just eat the fillings out of the sandwich rather than try to make this bread to actually make it into a sandwich. And I will say by far, this is the best low carb bread I have ever tasted. It's so good in fact, that I will just take slices of it. I'll eat it plain sometimes. Um, but it's actually the best with butter and it is the first time that I have found a bread substitute that I can eat with butter that makes me feel like I'm eating a real bread with butter. Now of course nothing can hold a candle to wheat bread. Uh, there's a reason. It's delicious. We all know that. But if you are in a place where you can't eat wheat or you're trying to avoid it, you're trying to avoid the carbs or the gluten or whatever for whatever reason, Definitely give this bread a try. I think you'll be surprised and hopefully you will enjoy it as much as I do and even my husband who has over the years been very resistant to try any of the fake foods that I would make, the low carb copycats of different things, he would always be very skeptical and he very rarely enjoyed any of those kind of, kinds of things. He has been eating this bread every day. I've been making his breakfast sandwiches in the morning with sausage and cheese and sometimes an egg round in, in the sandwich and he likes it. And of course he would be the first to say that it is not real bread and it doesn't taste like real bread. It's not as good. If I could make something that tasted as good as wheat bread, then I would be a billionaire, but it's good. So I hope that gives you some encouragement to try it if you're on the fence. And if you've been on a low carb diet for a while and have been missing bread, this really might be the ticket for you. Last thing I'll say is that my husband refuses to call it bread. I've been calling it egg bread, um, but he refuses to call it bread. He calls it protein foam, and for short, he calls it profo, which definitely sounds super appetizing. The main way that my husband has been eating the egg bread is as breakfast sandwiches in the mornings. They're easy for him to take to work, and if you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know that I made an epic amount of freezer breakfast sandwiches, usually about once a month. Those ones had wheat bread like sandwich thins, and since my husband wanted to go lower carb, we decided to do the egg bread instead, and it works great. On the breakfast sandwiches, I put a sausage patty round, I get them at Costco, and also a slice of cheese, and then sometimes I add an egg round as well. So what I have been doing to use up the extra egg yolks that I end up with is making double yolk egg rounds. So I just spray my silicone pan. I will link these silicone pans down in the description. I spray them with a little bit of avocado oil and then crack an egg in each one. And some of my yolks have broken, but I'm gonna do my best to put another yolk into each one of these little rounds. I usually pop the yolk anyway, so I'm gonna be popping all the other ones here, so it's no big deal. And I have two of these pans, and they're each with six rounds, so that's perfect for one recipe of the egg bread, because I used 12 egg whites for the egg bread. You can add salt and pepper if you want. And then I bake them at 325, same as the bread. 
just until they're done, I just kind of keep checking it probably about 10 to 12 minutes, I'd guess. These silicone pans are nice, but you definitely need to have a cookie sheet underneath them because once they're full, you cannot move them. This bread feels completely cool to the touch now, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice it. One tip if you wanna get real thin slices is to wrap up the bread uh, and put it in the fridge overnight, and then once you pull it out in the morning, it'll be a little bit more firm, and you can get a real nice thin slice of bread. Look at that. Doesn't that just look like bread? Even now, with it not being, you know, from the fridge, I can still get a pretty thin slice. There's a close-up of the texture. You can see it's got it's got a crumb to it. That's how it rips. It really looks a lot like white Wonder Bread. For storage, you're gonna to wanna to keep the bread in an airtight container in the fridge. And I've had batches in the fridge for up to a week and they were fine. So that is the recipe. Definitely go check out Maria Emmerich if you haven't before. She's got all kinds of incredible recipes. And if you have any questions that I missed, definitely leave them down in the comments and I will try to get those answered for you. Hope you guys are all doing great and I'll see you again in the next video.